Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And today I've got my 28 must-know tips and settings for the newly released DJI Avata. The first tip is to do with the DJI Goggles 2. So brand new headset design here. But the main thing I wanna talk about here is actually making sure that you take the time to adjust the strap, make sure that you you know slide the knobs underneath and twist to make sure that you're actually getting that focal point because you can damage your eyes if you, <laughs> obviously if it's not in focus and it's hurting your eyes, you're straining your eyes. So just make sure that you adjust that. But the main tip I wanna talk about here is using the lens cover because I've found that with the knobs, as you pick up the headset itself, it's very easy to accidentally slide it or twist, and then that completely adjusts the focus point. So I find that putting the cover over actually makes sure that the, the lens doesn't slide or the lenses don't slide left or right, and that really just makes sure that you don't have to worry about setting it up every single time before you fly. Moving on to tip two, and this is to do with the touch panel or the touch controls on the right-hand side of the headset. So basically all you have to do here is press and hold with two fingers and you will see the lock icon pop up and that will actually mean that now the screen is locked and you can't swipe left, right, up or down, nothing like that. You can't accidentally bump it. It's now locked as long as you've got the settings right and you're ready to go. It's always good to kind of lock it up so you don't have to worry about it. I find that it's just also good to know that if you can't do anything and you can't really adjust anything, it doesn't actually give you a clear indication that it's locked a lot of the time. Sometimes you might not see the prompt in the bottom right and sometimes that kind of changes to a different prompt. So right now it's saying double press the lock button to start the motors. So right now I can't adjust anything. Straight when I touch that panel though, it does say screen lock. So it's good to just know that you then press and hold with two fingers and then that will unlock the actual headset itself so you can start using those controls again. Tip number three is to do with the enhanced display. So to enable this, you literally just swipe down on your touch panel on the, the right hand side of the headset. So you swipe down to pull this new menu down. And then as you go across to the right here, you will see enhanced display. You'll see that it kind of creates more contrast. So you can see that there's a lot more of like a darker presentation to the tree line there. So if you do want that enhanced display, you can enable that pretty easily by just swiping down and then just clicking on enhanced display. Tip number four is to do with the head tracking. Now this is a really cool feature. It's a little bit gimmicky for a lot of people. Not everyone will want to use it, but it's at least fun to play around with. Again, you swipe down from the top there. So you use that panel on the side, swipe down. And then you'll see as we swipe across to the right, we've got head tracking. So straight when I enable that, it will now enable the head tracking. So one that the drone has actually lifted off and I start moving my head left and right, as long as I've got the motion controller enabled, then I can actually use the tracking of my head to adjust where the drone's looking, which is again, a really fun feature. I don't know if it's practical for everyone, but it's at least a bit of fun to play around with. Tip number five, again, is in that menu at the top. So swiping down, will pull up that menu. You swipe across, and this is actually where you can quickly adjust the brightness. So you can tap on it, and then swipe to your left or right to adjust that brightness point. Just a really easy way to adjust brightness on the fly, especially if you don't wanna to have to go through the menus to adjust the brightness. Tip number six is right next door there on the right hand side of the brightness, and it is the volume. So as I turn that down, I will now not get any sort of beeping noises or anything as I'm going through the menu system. I like to have that on just because it kind of lets me know that I've pressed a button and you know it's giving me that kind of feedback immediately. But if you don't like that, you can literally tap on it and then disable the volume by swiping down to the left. Tip number seven is to do with the other menu systems. So now what you want to do is you want to swipe on that control panel, but you want to swipe from the left to the right, and that will pull up this other menu here. This is where all the main settings are. But the first thing we want to look at is the status here. So as I click on that, it will actually bring up the most important information that you need to know at a glance, basically. So it lets you know motion controller compass error, calibrate compass, so that's really good to know, so you can calibrate that. And it also tells you aircraft in low power state, image transmission may stutter, start propellers, or recording to exit. So again, nice little like at a glance status update to let you know if anything's changed or if you need to address anything in the settings. So tip number eight is back in that status section there. Basically, as you go right up to the top there, you can see it says switch. Now this is basically giving you the opportunity to switch between aircrafts. So if you've got the DJI FPV, for example, and you've got that connected up, 
then you can switch from the Avata over to the FPV drone that DJI have released. If other aircrafts become available, then obviously this is the same spot that you would go to. Just under status, click on switch, and then you can choose a different aircraft there. Tip number nine is in the transmission section here. So there's a few little settings in here that you can play around with, but this is all to do with the channel mode. So by default, it's in the auto mode, which I would recommend in most situations. It, I've never had issues, it does a great job. But let's say, for example, you've got a lot of transmission issues and uh, you're noticing the, you know, the signal is dropping out. You can click on this, go to manual, and then it will just give you a little bit of an update on what's happening here, what the bars are like, you know, in, in the sense of like how good the connection point is. And then you can adjust the bandwidth here again, just to try to connect to, I guess, a better connection point here. Frequency is locked out at 5.8 gigahertz, but it's just good to be able to adjust this if you are having issues with connection. But in most situations, I would recommend just leaving it in auto. Tip number 10 is over in the settings section. This is where the bulk of the tips and settings are gonna come in. Uh, but the first thing is the safety menu here. Now, the first thing you wanna look at here is max flight altitude. Now, you can adjust this, and the reason you would want to adjust this is let's say, for example, you're just practicing, you're a little bit scared, you're in an open field, you just wanna get used to how the drone controls. You might wanna limit yourself to you know, 20 meters, for example, so you can only fly in a very small range away from yourself. So it's handy to set that up if you really need to. 120 meters is the legal height, so you don't wanna go over that. But, you know, you might wanna pull it down to 20 meters, 40 meters, or even 60, and then just try to contain your flight so you can get used to it. Tip number 11 is in the same section in the safety menu. It's just underneath the flight altitude and it's max flight distance. Now again, this is just to make sure that you can play around and practice with the flight of the drone in those early stages. Maybe you're letting someone else fly it and you don't want to give them complete reign to fly wherever they want. You can just limit it down to 20 meters, for example. So that means that then the distance is going to be capped out at 20 meters and that person or you, if you're practicing, can't fly too far away from you. That's really nice to have, but in most situations, you just kind of want to leave it at no limit. Before we go any further here, I do have some really cool specials exclusively for my audience. So if you wanna pick yourself up the Avata, you can go over with the link in the description below to the D1 Store's website. There's a landing page there for danstube.tv audience members. And you can check out some of the exclusive bundles over there where you can get some other really cool accessories with your drone and the other bundles that are available there. But also you can reach out to D1 directly, uh, contact, sales at d1store.com.au, mention Dan's Tube, and you can unlock some special pricing to get whatever drone, accessory, or product you're looking for. So for tip number 12, we're gonna look at the RTH altitude, which is the return to home altitude. By default, it's set at 30 meters, which is okay, but I would actually say that's probably not as safe as increasing the altitude. What this means is if it goes into return to home, or if you enable return to home, there are a lot of buildings and even some trees that go over 30 meters. So it's just handy to set it at either 60, 80, or even up to 100 meters. So the, the drone's gonna fly to that height before it returns back to you, meaning that it's gonna be able to clear all of the tree lines and building lines. If you've completely lost signal and the drone has to return to home, I find it just to be a little bit safer, especially even if you're you know, taking off from, let's say, you know, a lower point or even a higher point, and that's going to adjust the return to home altitude. It's just handy to have it set at, you know, even 80 is a good kind of point to have it at. Tip number 13 is still in that safety menu. You just wanna come down a little bit further though, and this is where you can calibrate the aircraft as well as the goggles. So right now you can see everything's in normal, which is really nice to know. So you can come back to this menu and just make sure that everything's as it should be in that normal option. But if you want to calibrate something, you tap on it and then it will kind of guide you through the process of calibrating the aircraft as well as the goggles. So it's just handy to know how to access this. And accidentally I tapped on one, so it's going to be calibrating it apparently and I can't even go back. So there you go. That's how you calibrate the goggles and the drone. Tip number 14 is called camera view before loss. And this is a really handy setting. Basically what it does is if you click on it, it will let you know what was happening before you lost connection with the drone. So let's say, for example, you've crashed into a tree and you completely lost that connection point. And this is handy to go back into because you can then basically view exactly what happened before you crashed the drone or you lost the drone. Tip number 15 is called the ESC beeping. And this is basically like the find my drone feature. So let's say, for example, you've hit a tree, you've lost it in a bush and you have no idea where the drone is. Enable this and the drone will start beeping. And this will basically let you know, hey, the drone's over here, come and find me. So this is a handy thing to know um, if you do lose your drone. 
Tip number 16 is called the advanced safety setting. So when you tap on that, there are a few options in here. Uh, by default, AirSense is enabled, which I would say is a handy thing to have enabled. You can set up the emergency propeller stop if you want to, um, and it tells you how to do that there. But it's more so just this section here, the aircraft signal lost action. So this is basically giving you the option. So if you lose signal with the drone, you have the option to either land, hover, or return to home. By default, it's at return to home, and that's what I would suggest, but you do have a few other options here. You can also enable and disable air sense, as well as the emergency propeller stop. Tip number 17 is in the control settings here. So you click on that one. Again, you've got a few other options here that you can play around with, but the one we wanna look at here is the gimbal pitch speed. Now you can adjust this. You can go from slow, normal, or fast. And that just means that you have control over the pitch speed of the gimbal. Uh, by default, it's at normal, but if you want some faster movements, you can change that. Or if you want some more maybe cinematic slow movements, you can just enable the slow option there. So tip number 18 here is called turtle mode. And basically what I'm gonna do is flip the drone upside down here. And you can see that the signal is upside down, but if I click on turtle mode, what will happen is the drone will flip back over. And there we go. How cool is that? Tip number 19 is under the camera settings, so you tap on that. Unfortunately, I can't adjust any of these because I'm recording the screen to show you guys, but under camera field of view, you can adjust that to get some wider field of view shots. I found that Rocksteady as well as Horizon Steady give you a few different shots. Under Horizon Steady, you're limited to the normal camera field of view, but under Rocksteady, you can actually set up some wider field of view shots. So yeah, just play around with the camera field of view. Uh, that's a really good option. Tip number 20 is just below this one. It's EIS, which stands for Electronic Image Stabilization. By default, it's on rock steady, but you also have the option for horizon steady. And as the name suggests, it keeps the horizon steady. So you have a few options there. Play around with those. We'll show you some clips now of what rock steady looks like compared to horizon steady. They both have their benefits and it really depends on what you're looking for. Tip number 21, still in the camera settings, is grid lines. Now this might not be for everyone. I do this with all my cinematic drones, but for these drones here, you might not want to do it, but this gives you the option of rule of thirds, so you can see the different lines there, which just makes it easier to frame a shot, but with an FPV drone, you might not want to do that. It's not for everyone. It can be handy though to set up the framing of the shot, and you have a few different options here under grid lines. Tip number 22 is just below grid lines. It's called center point. If you enable that and go back, oh, let me go back. There you go. You can now see I've got a center point. This is actually a nice one to have because it lets you know exactly where the center of the frame is. Tip number 23 is below center point and storage and it's called format. Now this is a obvious one for a lot of people but the Avatar actually has internal storage as well as you have the option to put in a micro SD and also the goggles can have storage as well. So you can go in here and format the individual uh, options here, either internal, the, the aircraft internal, the goggles, as well as an SD card. So you have three options there when you click and format. But again, because I'm recording, I can't show you that. But that's something to know once you go in the format options. Tip number 24 is in the advanced camera settings. And again, I won't be able to show you this one, but this is where you can choose the color. You can either go from normal to decine like decine like is more of a flatter profile. Gives you some options in post-production to play with the color but that's where you enable either normal or decine like color options tip number 25 is all the way down the bottom of this menu here and it's just called more and this is where you can actually do some practice flight through an app so you can connect to the dji virtual flight application connect the goggles to your phone and then you actually have the option to practice flying perfect opportunity where your drone is charging up or the batteries are charging you can have a little practice through the application and then you also have the option to wirelessly stream videos from a mobile phone or computer to your goggles. So that's a nice way to have some like, I guess, VR immersive options. If you've got some videos on your computer or phone, you can do that through the goggles as well. Tip number 26 is when you're back on the flight menu like this, where you can just see the camera feed. If you swipe up from the bottom, so from the bottom up, this will bring up the option to change from video over to photo. Again, because I'm recording, you won't be able to see that right now, but you literally just tap on that and it will swap from photo to video. And tip number 27 is in this menu here again. So you swipe up from the bottom. Again, you can swap over from video to photo or photo from video here. But also these are all of the main options here. If you want to adjust the modes, the shutter speed, ISO, EV, all that kind of stuff, you can come in here. 
You can also adjust the video quality, field of view, the electronic image stabilization, as well as the color. So you don't have to go through the menu if you want to play around with any of these settings. These are just the main like camera settings at a glance. So nice and easy to play around with those. So for tip number 28, this is how you update the hardware of the drone, the DJI Goggles 2 or the motion controller. You have to actually connect your phone to the goggles, go to the DJI Fly application, and then you'll see there is a firmware available. So I can tap on that and it's an optimized flight safety update. Also updates for the controller and the headset will be available through here as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. These are my 28 must know tips and settings for the DJI Avata. I really appreciate all of your support and I will chat to you in the next one. Peace.